That is right. So this meeting is being recorded. I want to make sure everybody knows that we're going to go ahead and post uh, the link afterwards on our YouTube channel, and I'll be putting all this information in the chat. <clears throat> So uh, for the purposes of today's uh, little virtual tour, make sure you use the Q&A session for questions only and the chat. Um, we'll check the chat periodically. I'll be putting links and other information there as well. All right, let's see. We, uh, Mr. Jordan, good morning. Let's say that. All right, oh, good morning to Maximilian from Whittier. Thank you for, for joining us here today. All right, it is 8.04. So welcome everybody to our live virtual tour of Bixby Marshland. My name is Maria and I'm gonna be your host today. I work for the sanitation districts of LA County and we, are, we have been hosting these Bixby Marshland tours since 2009, always on the first Saturday of every month, rain or shine. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we would have what we would call an open house where we would just open the doors to our to our to our facility to the Bixby Marshland and anybody was welcome to stop by uh, between eight and twelve. However, after uh, COVID, you know, came into place, we try to do the next best thing, which would be which was uh, virtual tours. So where I I always say a little bit of nature is is better than no nature at all. So uh, we're going to be going to Bixby Marshland live in just a few minutes, but. Um, I just wanted to remind you guys that this is a live tour and a lot of what you see, what we're gonna see today really depends on the time of day, the time of year, um, what time we show up, the weather, and what kind of mood the animals are in. So I always encourage everybody to come back and um, visit again when we are open. And also maybe check back on our previous broadcasts um, because we've you know, every, every experience is kind of a little bit differently. So I'll be putting a bunch of information on the chat so you guys have access to that. Um, so before we get started, we're gonna start with a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation just to put into context why we're here at Bixby. So you can just indulge me for a little bit. All right, so what we see here is an aerial shot of the area, and we are right here. Bixby Marshland is located in the city of Carson. This is the 110 freeway, there's the, the LA Harbor back here. And this is the, um, the Sepulveda exit, and here is Figueroa Boulevard. So we are right here, and this, this orange area right here is what we call Bixby Marshland. Um, it's 17 acres of a marsh, Sometimes not to get confused with the Ken Malloy Park, which is right over here, right down here. So you may be wondering why is the sanitation districts doing a tour on Bixby Marshland? Excellent question. Um, actually, Bixby Marshland is right next to what, what our sanitation districts facility, which is our joint water pollution control plant. This is our largest wastewater treatment facility that cleans the water um, for actually 5 million people in, in LA County. So this facility is huge. You can see the boundaries uh, in yellow. And uh, as our facility expanded, we kind of took over the, uh, the remediation of Bixby Marshall, which is right next to us. Actually, I going. Bixby Marshland was actually part of a larger water um, or larger mashes. It used to be called the Bixby Slough. And what you see on the, on the left in black and white is actually showing how much the marsh used to be prior to the city growing and uh, you know, more, more freeways and you know, more houses being developed. And this is kind of what it is now in you know, 2020. This is what remains of the marshes. So for us, it's important to keep the marsh the marshes alive because marshes actually play a very important role for, for habitats and, and we can cover, cover that later. Um, also, I wanted to show you guys, or at least for me, um, when I always think of marshes, I always think of water, but there's actually three parts to a marsh, the aquatic part, the riparian part, which is between the water and the land, the upland. So the kind of vegetation and the animals that you see, it's very distinct to all three parts of the marsh. And, and we're going to cover that today as well. So let's see. So if you were joining us here at Bixby Marshland, you would come into our parking lot. So that's actually where we're going to start our tour today. So joining me live are my friends, uh, Genesis Rodriguez, Basil Hewitt, 
you guys turn on your video and let's give a big uh say a big hello to our tours our, our guests that are actually here good morning good morning everyone good morning <laughs> all right we also have nathan hike on the line he's our bird guy he's he helps us out a lot with the birds today nathan you want to say good morning good morning good morning all right so basil i'm going to spotlight you and you take it away show us bixby marshland I'm just your camera person in the field. So as Maria said, you would park and you start your physical tour, your walking tour, right in the parking lot. So here's the view from the parking lot. And you see there's various plants and trees and shrubs. And as we go along, Maria and Nathan will point out some of the, the plants and trees and shrub in terms of what's unique. And we call this um, Stump the Studio. See if Nathan or Maria knows. Today it's interesting. If you were here last month or a couple of months before, it would be teeming with a lot of birds. We don't see as many birds today, but the plants are doing a lot of like very interesting things. Um, last month we saw a lot of nesting birds. Now we see a lot of trees kind of doing their thing, growing. Um, having berries and fruit on them. And so if I, as I walk along, we're in the parking lot. I want to show something that really caught my attention. I think this tree has a lot of cotton ball on it. And we're in the parking lot. If you, if you can see that, I have a whole, if you can see that, I'm going to try to get closer. And I think this is one of the ways this tree kind of propagates itself. Um, yes, you can that's, see a, that. that's a willow, Basil. Okay. Willows are very and, popular to, to marshes so it's because they love water. So it's not unusual to see a willow in, 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 up here in Bixby Marshland or in any, in any marsh. And, and you're correct that that white fluff kind of like dandelion substance is a way for the, for the, um, for the tree to like um, spread its, its seed. Can you see that? And it, the trees, the leaves are like in like cotton ball. I, I hope you can get the full effect. Um, if you can see it. And we're, we're trying out a new lens today that can get you up even closer so you can see it even if you're in the UK. Um, Genesis, you want to see if this you know, you can buy everything on Amazon and there's no, this is not an endorsement or a plug, but we bought this lens that hopefully we can get a close up look at this fluff. And I don't know if that, I don't know if that's a technical term. And we're going to switch to Genesis. You want to switch to Genesis camera and see if Can you, you could even get closer, I think. Get We're trying closer. to focus. Oh, there it is. Yeah, just get mm -hmm. even closer. Look at that. That's pretty amazing. And it, it's raining, this, this substance. Like they're just falling off the tree. It almost, it's almost like a light, um, very light snowfall. Because you see these little particles falling off the tree. Yeah. And this is the, the willow. Anything else interesting about the willow besides how it kind of propagates itself or spreads its seeds, Maria? Yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, willows love water. And that's actually, um, actually one thing about them is that they, they help reduce the flood risk because the roots really hold on to the ground. Um, also, if a piece of willow, like let's say breaks off during a flood or something, that little, that little piece of willow has a chance to become a, a full grown willow as well. But by far the, the coolest thing about a willow is that they, you know, it's, um, the bark is actually medicinal. They have been used to relieve headaches or um, things like that because the willow has um, salicylic acid, which is the main ingredient for aspirin. So over time, you know, cultures have been using the willow for, you know, fevers and pain, inflammation and, um, 
you, I, I wouldn't say this, but if you find a little chunk of willow bark somewhere, you can boil it at home and, and just consume it that way. Oh, look at that, it looks so cool. Did you, did you guys notice the seeds? Is it those little black dots in, in the white fluff? Yeah. Cool. Oh, can you get closer? Um, Dennis, just see if you can see any of the... the um... We have... Oh, I see them. Oh, oh yeah. so that's how it's, it just floats along and that's how the seeds find a new um, nesting spot or place yeah. to grow. Yeah, it, wow. helps, it, helps it helps disperse the seeds far from the, far from the tree and spread to the new areas. So it's like Christmas in May here, I imagine. Look at that. Yeah, and you even see it on the bark. If you, if you um, switch to my video, okay. I won't be as nifty as Genesis' new camera or new lens. Oh, wow. I don't know if you can see the bark. So here's the bark of the, the, the willow tree, and you can see some of that cotton it's like, ball. It's like fluff. stuck on the bark, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. It, I mean, if you stand on the tree enough, you'll get like little snowflakes in your hair and it's not cool. dandruff. You can see that? Uh, yes, we have a question from Desiree. She says, did the, did the indigenous people use the plant medicinally? And the answer is yes. This has historically been recorded as being used uh, by the native cultures as medicinal. So um, it's really cool. Thank you for- So today is, is yeah, thank you. Today, you're, we're going to really dive into plants um, because the, because of the increase in temperature, the, the plants are just really taking off. So we're going to focus on this plant. Uh, Maria, can you, or Nathan, this is Stump the Studio. Oh, my. What plant is I'm going to defer to Kelly from the UK. So she's with you. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Kelly. I... I think it's a California rose. It, oh it, my gosh, I know. you're right, you're right. It's a it's a California rose that hasn't bloomed yet. All right. So one for the field person, I stumped you guys. <laughs> Do you see the thorns on it? I see, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, I, I had rose in the back of my head. I just hadn't said it yet. <laughs> this is like Jeopardy. You only have 32 <laughs> seconds. So we're the, gonna get a new Well, ahead. the Cali okay, this is my defense. The California rose is known for having this pink flower on a pink, it doesn't look like a rose. It kind of looks like a like a flower with only five pink petals. And it has this yellow, the little yellow flower stems. And I was looking for that, but you're right. Now that you see the thorns and the leaves, it, it's definitely that. So these California roses love water. So again, no surprise there we're seeing this at, in a marsh. And um, they, they're, they're fancy roses. The whole flower, including um, the whole flower is actually edible. So if you ever come back and you want to try the California rose, stop by this, by this um, where Basil's at. But now you know, guys, whoever comes here and you see a pink, pink flower with five petals only, it's the California rose. And you can see the willows done its thing all over the rose. Look at the leaves, how they, it has all that kind of, you see that? All that fell off the willow tree and it stuck to the California rose. Wow, cool. Very cool. Today, you know, last month was the wonderful world of birds. And today it's, what can plants do for you? And here's the California rose, another shot. And you can see that that's not cobweb. It's that fluff or, again, technical term that's wonder, fallen off. Maybe Nathan can help us. I wonder if, if the birds use this to kind of help build their nest, if it's sticky, you know? Like you see little bird nests, maybe. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know for certain, but I'm assuming yes because they they'll take any they'll take whatever materials are available. But um, like different species are very some species are more specific than others. Like like um, they'll like if you look at certain nests, they'll they'll very much use certain materials and others will be more dynamic about what materials they use. So I'm sure some, I'm sure there's probably a goldfinch lining its nest with a, um, the willow, willow fluff. Yeah, this is a pretty cool shot. You can see a little bit of the dew drop on the leaf. And I'm not even using Dennis's new lens. Can you see that? We see it, Basil, thank you. 
All right, and right next to it, across the pathways, I'll give you a, a slow moment of nature. You know, as Maria mentioned, it's about 17 acres, and it's just packed with plants and trees. And one of our unique uh, members of this family is this tree. And again, this is now time to play Stump the Studio. Okay, so let's what let's start the audience. Who knows in the audience what this is? Go ahead and put it in the chat. I'll give you guys a few minutes. Don't be shy. Uh, G says, well, it, G caller says pine. We'll go with that one. But what kind of pine is it? It looks like a kind of pine, yes, but what kind exactly? Do we give a hint, Maria? Should I show something closer to, for the the pine lover. Oh yes, if you've seen a previous tour that I've, I've given, I've given substantial hints into this, uh, okay. what kind of what kind of pine this is. I'm gonna try to get close. There we go, and, yes. Uh, all right, let's see if that works. Uh, I wanna focus. Uh, Desiree, in the meantime, while well, we give people a chance to look into this, uh, Desiree has a question. She says, all plants in Bixby are Californica are unique to California. Um, when prior to the districts being involved with the with Bixby, there were a lot of native and non-native plants, but part of the restoration process was to put only native plants to help bring a natural environment to this. So they are unique to, to this area. Thank you for your question. All right, so we're gonna jump into this. This is the famous Tory pine. If you've heard of the Tory pine before, they're actually kind of a rare species of, 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 uh, of pine trees. Um, there are only two naturally occurring growth areas in all of North America. One you may be familiar with is like near La Jolla area in San Diego. You've seen Torrey Pine Reserve and Torrey Pine Street, Torrey Pine Community. And that's because this, it grows there and the area kind of identifies with, with, with the pine tree, with, with this pine there. Um, the other patch is naturally occurring in the Channel Islands, the Santa Rosa Island. And further up north. So we are actually very lucky to have some Tory pines here. We actually have 28 in Bixby marshland. And, and the reason that Basil zoomed in to this, Basil, you can hold still. Um, so part, part of the Tory pine is you see the needles, they're kind of bundled right at the stem. Each little bundle only has five needles. That's specific to the Tory pine. So each little bundle has five needles. That's why we were zooming in to show you guys. Uh, Tory pines also have the longest needles, the length of a needle for, for any of the pines uh, in, in, the, in the pine species. So when we think of pines, we, we think of like, you know, pines, obviously the needles, but uh, like a Christmas tree that has like a triangular top. Tory pines have kind of like an open branch crown, kind of like a bonsai that kind of, you know, spreads up at the top. So very, very- Is this like a good shot? Can you see that? Yes, this yes, thank you. So there's our Tory pines. Those are very popular. Um, I hear there's only about 3,000 in existence. And um, and this one is about, I want to say, 40 feet in height. Yeah, that's true. I actually heard that uh, someone told me, and I'm not sure if this is true or not, is that um, part, like the reason there, there's some here in this area is because they were trying to have a backup to the Tory Torrey Pine Reserve in La Jolla. So they brought some up here a long time ago just to see if it would take. And the Torrey Pine itself is, is a very hardy tree. It can grow really deep roots. So it's, you know, and it's close to the, it likes the water too. So it's, it did well. So we are very lucky to have Torrey Pines here. So uh, Torrey says they are very good for making baskets because the needles are long. Thank you, Torrey. Oh, okay. Didn't Thank I you so that. much. That'll be on the next round of Stump Studio. What plant is good for making baskets? That's true. All right. And then the next, right next to the Tory pine. So here's the bark of the Tory pine. And you can get a feel of the, the vegetation that has grown uh, up in Bixby. And right next to it, its next door neighbor is this plant. And this is, we're going to expand the game from just Stump Studio. We're going to Try to stump the studio audience as well. Oh yes, if this, this plant has like a waxy leaf. 
Any guesses? Did we cue the Jeopardy music? Oh, I'll do it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, Mr. Jordan has a question. How many miles is the trail? You know, where, where the path that we walk? Oh, um, it's, it's, it's an 18 acre, 17 acre um, footprint. It's not really, I don't know, it's not, I, I don't have a good feeling. You could walk it um, in 10, 15 minutes. I mean, just, yeah, or yeah. But, you know, you stop and you admire things, especially, you know, if they're like Canadian geese or they're hawks, you know, or um, different birds, you can stop and you could be hung up in an area for like 30 minutes or more. Nathan sometimes gets hung up in that for hours in the area when he sees a rare bird. But um, so this, do we have any guesses on what plant this is? Linda says toy, toyon. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Um, no, I think, uh, I think this is. Is that a yellow flower I saw below it, or is that just a? a oh, it's a lemonade berry. I'm it's, pretty sure. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a lemonade berry. It's a lemonade berry with for, no berries. That's why you can't. <laughs> that's can't why it's throwing us off. We're looking yes. for berries. So the lemonade berry is is a it's you know a, a native plant and it it's the waxy leaves are because it, it helps it from preventing uh, it helps it retain moisture, but normally it would have this these red berries you know sticking out from above it, and the berries are actually they're they're edible you can eat them as is or you can flavor water like a little lemonade berry. Um, we have 46 of these here and in, in, at Bixby. So maybe you're trying to see a pattern. Like I think if we pay attention and listen, uh, nature gives us more than things that we can see. You should be touching, you know, the leaves for textures. We see textures in the bark. We see the leaves. We see colors. Does the lemon berry have any fragrance, Basil? Um, the leaves don't. Um... I'm looking for a berry and I can't, maybe, um, maybe, maybe it's the time. birds have eaten them all. They were here last month. Um, I'm looking for even a uh, dried up berry. Like I think here's one right here. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let's try this again. Oh yeah, I see the little red. Um... See, uh, yeah, right there. Cool. Yeah, so you would see more little red clusters normally. Cool. Yeah, this is. Let me right. pick one of those. Yeah, it's a dried berry. Um, yeah, it does have a, a little bit of the tarty flavor. Someone said, look on the ground. Uh, oh, good tip. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm looking. I wonder, I mean, I wonder if it's. I mean, if we use it to make drinks, I wonder if the some of the birds don't find these to be a treat. Yeah, there are no. I found like a couple of dried berries, but That's last good. month they were they were in um, full bloom. I say for next big speed marshland, we should and there's berries that we should make lemonade live. <laughs> on, <laughs> okay. On Zoom, on Zoom <laughs> yeah. Have you tried? Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, yeah. Well, right. Okay, I will say I tried it. I was bird watching after the last tour and I um, found one on the other side of the part of the marshland and I, I ate it, I picked it and ate it. And it was, it was kind of like a, like the oil, it reminded me of the oil from lemon juice. Like if you, if you've ever frozen lemon juice, the, the, um, the oil will start like to if, separate out and it's, it's very like tart. if you get it from this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's oh, very tart and it's like a little fuzzy seed with a with a like lemon oil type flavor. Almost like the oil from like the skin of a lemon. Um, uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see the the berries I see are a few are dried up, are pretty um, desiccated. Like you can see, I think they were. Bunch of berries yeah, right here. Let's try it out. Cool. Another thing I noticed was that that particular bush along the trail. It looks like uh -huh. the, the the maintenance people had pruned along that along yeah. the 
trail so a lot of that is like new growth so there's there's probably yeah. one that's like out in the open that's probably got lemonade berries on it and i'm looking yeah like further in off the path what, why why don't you keep walking and maybe we'll run into other plants fast so we can see okay. more of bixby all right here's another plant uh, it just so you so you folks know, Basil, show the little placard. If you're when you go to Bixby, it's usually you could have two options. You can do a a, a guided tour, so we would normally have a docent that shows you around, but you also have the option to just go on your own and and follow the little placard. So that's um so so you can experience it at your own pace and look up things. So here we are at the what is this? The future the gooseberry. Form of gooseberry. Yes, I'll read it for yeah, you. And Okay. I'll, I'll let you read it, sorry. It says, these flowers will become tasty berries providing food for wildlife and people, but the pines on this plant make berry picking difficult. So this way the, the few berries will remain to make seeds for next year. Cool. So let me try to see if I can get a close-up shot. Can you see the pines? Uh, I see the leaves. There you go, see that? Oh. See those oh. little prickly things on the, the stem or the, yes. yeah, it's they're quite sharp. Spiky. Almost, I mean, yeah, spiky. Yeah, spiky. Good word, spiky. And I'm looking for a pl a flower. Nate Nathan is usually the guy that picks out the flower. So we see a red, hangs. a red or pink. You know, Boy. Maria. Yes. I um, I sent you a picture from last month. Oh yes. Teams were where I found, I don't know why this one doesn't have any flowers, but I found one near near the um, the grape trellis yeah. that had lots of like flowers on it, so. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen in, in one second just to show everybody what it normally looks like. Hold on, Basil. That one's got okay. seed, seed pods on it. Yeah, right. those are seed pods. Hold on, hold on, I'm gonna share my screen, okay? So when you guys can see it, this is normally what it would look like. Here we have the leaves and there's these little red, um, the gooseberry pods hanging off it, so. Yeah, that's what makes it, that part, those flowers, that's what fuchsias look like. They have these, normally fuchsias are a little bit bigger, but they hang down with like um, flower parts hanging, drooping down. And that, that's what makes it a fuchsia flower, gooseberry. Cool, thank you. We have a question. Let's see. Okay, so who's who's spotlight right now? It should be Basil. Okay, there we go. Yes, I'm spotlighted. I'm okay. showing the, the seed pot, I think Nathan yeah. referred to. Oh yeah, you see it, it's dried up right there. It has a little the bulb. Okay, there's a question from Desiree. She says, Has there been over the years tong tongue input on plants to add? Um when you say Tonga, the um, native people input? Yes. I, I'm not, um, I'm not, you know, I know that um, we worked with uh, wildlife and plant experts, and I'm not sure what various groups, and to make sure we tried to um, restore this as much as possible to kind of native, um, or, or plants that are, that are, uh, native to this area. Th that's true. When we were involved in the restoration process, we actually hired a restoration firm to research or pretty much to bring only, or restore the area using only native plants. So there was some research there, but you know, it was a long time ago. So I really can't recall what the yeah. level of we, input was. And we produced a number of reports on it. And then right next to it. Hey, actually, wait. Oh, uh -oh Genesis found something. We have seen a bird. Okay, I'm going to spotlight you, Genesis. Hold on. I've been looking for birds left and right, and I was lucky enough, I found this little one. Um, that's when I was going to talk. Wait, what's a sneak peek? Um, yeah, I found this little bird right here hanging out. Does anyone know what it is? Because I don't. <laughs> and then... She also came down to. Let's see if our, our attendees can see. Yeah, here you go. That's, the best, that's the best. That's the best picture. I don't know what kind of bird it is, but I think it's hanging out in a desert wild grape plant vine, just from looking at the vines around it. 
Oh, yeah, yeah it's good looking call. for food. It's That's looking a... for food. Okay, we haven't heard from anybody in the chat. Uh, Nathan, can you tell us what it is? Yeah, that's a song sparrow. Um, yeah. I've been I've been hearing them in the background. Um, oh yeah. If we're really if we're really quiet, we might might hear one. But um, um, if you hear anything, Nathan, feel free to stop us, and I'll I'll keep my little bird microphone on. I have it on in the background. It usually exemplifies the bird sounds. All right, back at you guys later. So all the pictures that we're gonna take today, Genesis, can I can you send them to me, and I'll put them on our Facebook. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So, and um, later in the chat, I'm gonna put a link to our Facebook, um, our Facebook uh, page, so that we can see. If you guys, if you visit us, you'll be able to see the pictures that we took today. Okay. So we're gonna go where Basil is. Back to Basil. All right. So we were just looking at this, a fuchsia flowering gooseberry, which is a long name for a cute plant, and right next door. So there's a lot of grass different grasses here and don't ask us what type. I can make even a California joke, but I won't. That's a California sage, the, version, purple sage. Yes, this is a this is a cal this is a type of sage. And one of the things I would say about it is when I um, smell it, it smells it smells like cologne. And it's one of my favorite story of Maria loves to tell about this plant and the wild, wild west. So this, Any story? <laughs> the story goes that this is also called um, cowboy cologne because it's so fragrant. And when the cowboys were out in like the land doing their thing and they would come back into town, they would stop by these kinds of bushes and kind of roll in it to, to freshen up so that they would smell uh, more pleasant once they were around people in town. So cowboy cologne. Can, can I say they were conserving water, Maria? Sure. Say that? Yes. Yeah. But I also hear if you bundle it, you could you could like uh, it, you know it's like kind of like papyri. You would have it and it would. Um, it smells really good. Make, yeah. What does it smells like? Yeah. What? Cologne. It you smells said. like uh, yeah cologne. I mean I I snapped the a branch off yeah and I could see why if, if I wanted to save water I could just like rub myself or wipe rub some of this on me and it works as a pretty decent uh, nature, natural cologne. Yeah, it's pretty um, um, fragrant and not in a bad way, a good way. But it smells like, you know, like men's cologne. All right. Not female cologne, men's cologne. All and right. then, so you're getting a vibe of anything else you want. And here's another um, Tory Tory pine. pine. can see the, the height of this tree. And then right next to it, there's another cool looking plant. I hope our audience can see that really well. Oh, look at that texture. The texture at the left, yeah. Is it furry, Basil? Can you touch it? Yeah, I guess so like velvet yeah it feels like velvet i feel like i should get a uh, jacket in that color. yeah i think it's a sage but i'm not um i'm not the um expert on that any uh, tori yeah, I tori and mimi hi mimi say it's sage it's a sage i yeah. think that's all we need sage. to know it's sage hi mimi yeah it's, it's a purple sage <laughs> Yeah, the purple sage. I love how if you pay attention to the nature, you see all these intricate patterns and textures. I mean, frankly, if I would have walked by, I probably wouldn't even have noticed. Look at that, how cool. Yeah. And then we go further, there's more California rose. You can see that. And then there's this humongous tree here. I don't know if you can see it. And I'm looking like straight up. I want to walk almost straight up. I don't want to go off the path. When you visit Bixby, stay on the path. Don't do what Basil would do. True. The reason we stay on the path is because there may be habitats or nests. Um, if you actually, in case, if you've ever, if you go to Bixby and you see yellow tape, it's usually because there's some kind of nesting bird or nest so that we, we, we know we're trying to protect it. So good points. Always stay on the path. 
So this particular tree, look at the leaf. Oh, yes. Uh, audience, does um, anybody know who that is? Well, I mean, what tree that is? No, that's okay. Uh, Basil, do you want to tell everybody what, which tree it is? Um, I want to say sycamore. Uh, not quite, no. Uh, the reason we, okay, so the sycamore have a um, meat. Oh, yes, Linda. Linda got it right. It's a cottonwood tree. Yay, oh, Linda. cottonwood, my bad. Yes, uh, sycamore has like a maple shaped leaf, kind of like with like fingers, if you will, but the cottonwood has this like spade um, shape tree. And these are also uh, popular in like uh, marsh areas. They, they help, they can survive floods. And so they're, you know, they like water. That's why we have it here. Um, also similar to the willow these also give off this like white fluff to help to help their cycle so it's, it's, it's yeah i don't see much of that white fluff on this today the willow has it um and there's a willow so if i go so let, let me just kind of pan so you'll see this cottonwood uh anything else we need to know about the cottonwood any tidbit any fact so if you just follow the sky and then you go uh, Linda says the wood is used for carving, but I, I, I want to yeah. say that I haven't seen it here, but um, if you cut a twig right at the knuckles, there's a star shape. Um, it's like a little star in the center. So that's just one of those little weird, like it's like nature hidden um, or natural shapes. Oh, in, it, nature. in the cottonwood tree? Like in the, in the little stem, like right at the knuckles. So you have to like cut it with a knife to get a clean, a clean look. Let me see Sorry. if I find it. Let me find a picture and I'll, I'll share my screen. Hold on. I'm looking to yeah. see. Like one, I mean, I, I use cottonwood sometimes to see if there's sap suckers around. Um, if you go, if you look towards the top, the branches, you'll, you'll see some decent sized branches, but they'll be smoother. And sometimes you'll see like these little patterns of like, little lines going around the, the tree in little holes in, in a line going around the tree. And those are like sap sucker wells. And they'll they basically drill holes in the tree and they wait for the oh. sap to ooze out. Oh, I think I see it, but the, the camera I have can't. So they're almost, yeah, they're like holes drilled in the, the upper parts of the tree. Um, yeah, like it'll be. Like Pardon? Yeah, it'll be smooth. Like where the branches are smooth, they'll they'll drill there. Um, I, I hear a bird. Do we know what bird that is? Uh, no, but I, I see it on the branch. It's straight across from Genesis. It's like to her right. Oh, we'll wait. Um, we'll wait the, for her to. The... Right. Straight ahead, Genesis. Oh, I just flew. All right, and then now, and across the way. Here's the willow, another um, And then we're gonna walk. So I'm gonna, I'm heading towards, and we saw this in the parking lot as well, with the fluffy stuff. And in the marsh as well, we have placards talking about uh, some of the recycled material utilized in the marsh to make benches and the, the bridge. Oh, we do have some actual berries. You did? You found them right here? Oh, okay. Oh, so Nathan's right. If you get off the path. So we were looking for the lemonade berry. Here it is. Here's a- Oh, yay. Hi, lemonade berry. A mess of lemonade berry. And I wish Nathan were here to taste one. Uh, hold on. Try it. You'll be fine. <laughs> yes, we should but all. You now it. glow in the dark, don't you? <laughs> if you spotlight me, you'll see a hopefully a clear photo. Okay, spotlight. Uh, I am going spotlight over. Genesis. Whoa! Look at that. 
And I guess that fluffy stuff is from the willow. From the will, I see it's from the willow. Wow, it's pretty cool. Yeah, this tree is loaded with berries. All right, I'm switching back to to basil. You know what? I'd love to see Genesis. Do you think your close-up camera may give us a different look on that? I'm just gonna take a photo. And here's a placard, one of the placards for, as you do your self-guided tour, gives you kind of background on lemonade berries, you know, thick and leathery leaves, protects um, the waxy uh, coating, um, uh, prevents uh, water loss. And that's what, yeah. So the birds, uh, the berries are eaten by birds and other animals. Um, yeah, and especially, like I said, there were, there were tons of birds here last month and they picked one tree clean. This one, I'm not sure why there's so many berries on it, um, but the berries are all encased in that, that fuzzy stuff. And I wonder if it's a deterrent from animals um, eating it, I don't know if you can see that. No, it's just the willows make a mess of everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Basil, yeah, can look you... at this. Oh, wow. Look at that. What do you like, Maria? No, I was going to say, can you make it to the bridge? So we can see that. Yeah, we're going to make it to the bridge. I'm going to, I know, I'm I'm fixated on the lemonade berry today. Um, I wanted to show the California brittle bush, which is always my favorite. Oh, there um, it is. Yay. It's my personal favorite. It looks like little. Uh, miniature sunflowers, but they're yeah. not as big as you think. They're about, I want to say two inches in diameter. And usually you'll just see it like right here where I'm looking at. Usually, like last month, it was just a whole field of these yellow flowers. It's pretty spectacular. Um, and now there are these white flowers here. And I'm not sure what those are. Can, can, you back to, can you go back to the California brittle bush? The so, California, oh, the brittle bush. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so that one, I was just going to say that this is actually one of the main food sources for for the animals here at Bixby because it's edible, so plants eat it. So that may be why you don't see any um, yeah. <laughs> around. And we do see insects. I, we have spiders, we have ants. I had just had a spider crawling on my camera a second ago. Um, if um, you see one of our, early, I'm going to put a playlist to our districts, uh, our Bixby Marshland uh, playlist of our recordings. You, um, there was one of the broadcasts that was done by a nature photographer, and they have amazing shots of the insects here. And um, she talks about where she finds them and stuff. So I'll go ahead and put that on the chat as well. I, I will so see what I want. Go ahead, Basil, go ahead. Uh, I'm walking towards the, um, the pergola. So when people tour here, you can, or when we open it for school tours as well, folks can sit here under the pergola and have lunch and so on. And this plant is the California um, wild grape. And it's really growing in well. Um, I'm going to, don't tell anyone, this is, I'm going to cross the tape a little bit because I want to get close. Hey, just it's going on YouTube. <laughs> It's like our version of Las Vegas with cameras. So you can see these grapes coming in. And they're pretty, I mean, they're tasty, a little tart, but the birds love them. And when our guests come by, including yes. the two-legged con, they'll pick yeah. them. Yeah, I was going to say that guests are always welcome to when we come, I mean, you know, to try it, to try the berries. That's, you know, we're here to like showcase nature, right? So it's amazing to be able to have that. Oh, shoot. Basil, can there's you- like a tur There's a turtle nest over here, but I don't see it. I, I'm gonna- That's why the leave. tape was- <laughs> That's why the tape is there. Wait, I'm, I'm literally, go ahead. I was like, can you zoom in on the bark of the, 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 the gazebo? So, oh, oh, we can't see it too well. Okay, so these were actually eucalyptus trees. Can you see that? We hold on. These are eucalyptus trees that were actually here in Bixby before, but eucalyptus are not native to this area. So when they restored 
the, the, the facility, they were removed, but they were repurposed to build the gazebos. Um, but one cool story about the, these, these, these trees right here is that you can see kind of like the, they have these unusual um, curves. Genesis, can you help him find one so we can zoom in on it? There we go, there we go, exactly. So these, so we see the bark, you know, kind of goes up and down, right? But if you see these unusual, like horizontal curves, Basil, run your finger through one of them so we get an idea of um, how big they are. Those are actually um, patterns created by the bark beetle. So the larva kind of, you know, kind of burrow in there and as it eats his way, it'll get full and then it'll, it'll fly off when it's done. So that's why you have these, um, you know, like, weird uh, swirl patterns, which are, that's like patterns in nature. So I always find that fascinating. Thank you, Basil, for, for showing us. You're welcome. All right, and let me, I don't see the turtle, turtle nest. I'll just show you the sign. I was gonna say, how did you know it was a turtle nest? Yeah, whenever you see it um, taped off, it means that something is nesting. Um, I'm surprised, kind of. Oh, well, while you're turtle. there, I, I wanted to point out that the benches, the trash cans, the bridge, everything, say, any kind of structure, the trash receptacles are made out of recycled plastic. So we, we want to make sure that so you can see it. Yeah, you can see the, the, sun, the texture. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the turtles love it. All right, I'm getting out. That's our little secret. <laughs> yes. So if, um, when we're open to, the, I mean, the Bixby Marshland is open to the public the first Saturday of every month. But if you have a school group or an organization that, that would like to visit, we can schedule those during the week um, as well. So make sure you check our website. I'll go ahead and put it here so you can um, check back for, for Bixby. Maria, you're going to be happy. Look what we found. Emergency, emergency. What, what happened? Hello? Like yes. Yes. Okay, I'm so sorry, the quality is bad, but I found these birds and when they heard me coming, they like flew in. Okay, I'm Nathan, gonna spotlight. What is this? I'm gonna spot, hold on, you're not spotlighting yet, hold on. Oh my gosh, I've never seen I'm that. I'm sorry, it's, it's not the best quality because I was. Okay, it's good enough. There, there was like a whole school of them. And as I walked up, they just all flew away. Look, you see, there's another one right there. Oh yeah, you see it. Like if you see on the on the top uh, top left. Yeah, it's like the back of it, right? But exactly, yeah. But there was like a whole school of them. There was at least like ten, and they just flew away. And Nathan wants to tell you what it is. Um, that's a. Go ahead. I'm pretty sure I got to double check. It's scaly breasted munia. That was my All right, go ahead and fact check. Okay, yeah. I see another bird. Okay, lady. Okay. I want back. to show insects you, and the California rose in blooming. So no emergency for the next two minutes and twenty-two seconds. Nathan, can you this. can you put on the chat what the bird was so that people can read it? Oh, it's the California rose with yep, bees. A... Just like my PowerPoint had it. Awesome. Oh shoot! Flew away. If you like to, if you like to photograph insects, I hear you like to know. You should know what kind of plants they like, so you go to those plants and you can see them. Yay! So there we go. Count the bas Count the petals, Basil. There should be five. I'll let the audience. See. Oh, here's another insect here. Hopefully, I won't scare it off. Can you see that? There's an insect right in there, like a fly. But what's interesting about this fly, it mimics a bee, if I can get a, a good focus. Good focus. It, um, shoot, I want to get it focused. Oh, there you go, you see that? That's not a bee, that's a fly. I don't know if the audience can see that. And we learned that from the insect expert. And it's in the California roads. Um, Genesis, do you want to take a picture? Come you back away. So that's kind of interesting where the insect mimics the bee because they figure if it looks like a bee, someone might not eat it because the bee may um, inflict some kind of sting. 
Okay, so we have a question from Desiree. She says, so is the Calif so does the California rose require lots of water? I I my answer is if it's near a marsh, it likes the water. Yeah. Yeah, it's literally it's about ten feet from the the water body here in the marsh, right okay. from the bridge. You can uh, zoom in on my down. photo, it might be a little clear. I'm going right now. Hold on. Oh, look at that. And so that's not a bee. That, we learned that on one of one of our do docents gave us a tour and pointed out that that's a fly. Mr. Jordan wants to know: Does the does is there a scent to the California rose? Does it smell like a rose? You could see the what the bulb in the back. See right behind the plant. There's the one that's in a bulb. Ah. Uh, so what do you want me to? I just smell it. Does it smell like anything? So when we come here, we should be engaging all our senses. Oh yeah, it does. It does have a fragrance of a rose. It does. You have to get really. Yeah, it does. It has. It really. And now you know the cowboy cologne was that other plant. This is like the the cowgirl cologne. The cowgirl yeah, this cologne. Smells... <laughs> cool. Thank you. Yeah, it does smell. I never thought of doing that before. You guys are going to take me places I really didn't want to go. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to, could you spotlight? Yeah. I'm going to. Right yeah. yeah, so this is pretty cool. I didn't anticipate finding um, so many roses in bloom. It, it's not as big as your regular rose. I mean, it's supposed to be small. To say, yeah. It's very small. Um, I want to say, again, two, two inches in diameter. It looks bigger because I'm up close. But if I back out, you kind of get the feeling of what this rose bush looks like. Cool. Okay, can we um, go to the bridge? Go I to know. the bridge. Yes. She's she, she's impatient. I want to be able to see the nature. In the background, I've heard um, yellow warblers and common yellow throats and um, so, song sparrows. So during. April, I mean, January, February, March, April, May. Um, this area is really teeming with all types of birds, Canadian geese. Um, we saw a cormorant last month. But as we get as we get closer and closer to summer, the evaporation rate goes up. And um, so there's less water in the marsh. So now it's changing. You can see the, um, the tulies right here. And I don't know if Marie, you want to talk a little bit about these, these tulies, these are these long plants. Yes. That grow right along the marsh. Yeah. So tulies are, are very popular in, in, in a marsh and this, this plant has adapted to, to living in a marsh. So whereas a normal, a regular plant, I should say, um, it absorbs oxygen from like the roots from like the soil, the space next to the soil. The tulies actually can live up to two feet under, in, can be two feet in water and they absorb the oxygen from the stem because the stem sticks out from the water. So that's, that's pretty cool. And it's been used by, you know, native cultures for basket weaving. Um, animals make their, you know, hide in there. They, they make their burrow in there. So that's, um, it's a really, really cool plant. Very cool. Yeah, I'm. I don't see as many. Normally, we see um, ducks. A lot of mallards here. Um, we've been lucky to see them in the past, but I, I think it's getting hot, so we we don't have those. And they probably the Canadian geese have gone someplace uh, more Canada-like. I would imagine they don't like Canada dry. They like Canada wet. Again, not a plug. And there's a bird sitting on, but I can't, you know, there's a couple of small birds sitting in the tube. And we've also seen um, raccoons here. And oh yeah. So one of the, yeah, one of the questions we always get asked is what, okay, right now you see the water is not that high, but if you see some of our older tours or if you've been here before, you would see the water is much, much higher. Uh, we always get asked is what kind of fish do we have here and we don't have any big fish but uh, we do have um, um, a mosquito fish mosquito fish right and that helps abate the, the mosquito population 
Um, Linda says, she asks, are there any red winged blackbirds? And Nathan says, yes. Thank you, Nathan. So uh, hopefully everybody can come in and check back again. You'll, you guys will see something very different every time you come out here. We are, we're always learning. Nature is always teaching us something new. Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah. So we're here at the bridge. Um, and I think we've seen that the the high spot, the high points here. We have another willow doing its thing. We started this tour with a fluffy willow. Genesis, do you want me to spotlight you? I see you found a bird. Yeah, please. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh my goodness! Look at that bird. Audience, does anybody know what bird this is? It has big eyes. That's my. That's my. Uh, Tori says it's a dove. Dove? I don't. But there's a question mark. I don't know. It looks uh, like a dove. To Nathan, me Nathan as you want to well. confirm that? Oh, yeah, it's a morning, morning dove. A morning. Dove. I've never seen a dove so up close. A morning dove. Oh. Oh, Basil actually had a morning dove with with making that made a nest at his house, right? Yeah, so last month, or what are we in June now, May, April, it was just nesting season for the birds. So in my backyard, um, a, a pair of morning doves made a nest and they laid their eggs. It was really interesting. They're, they come in pairs, they're monogamous. They made a nest, they laid two eggs, um, 14 days, the eggs uh, hatched. And within like, felt like three weeks, the, the, the mom and dad and the two chicks flew off. They got the chicks grew so quickly and so big that they couldn't fit in the nest. And then they flew to a tree and just roosted there. And now they're gone. So it kind of captures how quickly things change here. You know, that, you know, this last month I had a morning, I think they also call them turtle doves. And I became an expert because I, I sent a picture to Nathan and said, Nathan, what is this in my backyard? And um, he told me everything I'd want to know about the morning dove or turtle dove. And they have a pretty wide um, habitat. They're also in the Caribbean. They're on the East Coast. I'm not sure if they're in the UK. We, we but, have a yeah. question. Sorry, Basil. We have a question from Mr. Jordan. He wants to know, are there any frogs here? Um, I, I know that there's the, there's a California tree toad. So uh, every so often there's a survey of the flora and fauna here and they have found um, um, a tree toad. And that's kind of like the icon that represents their imagery that represents Bixby marshland. Um, but I haven't seen one, but when they do the survey, that's one, of, it's a frog or a toad, but it's not, it's not big. Tiny. The Pacific tree frog. That's that's Pacific tree frog. Thank you. I couldn't so remember. This is our second so that we have. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see grapes coming in here. Oh there they are. Yeah. Still, yeah. Uh the yeah. other question that we had Hey was, Maria? Yes. Maria? Yes. Sorry. Um there is a hold on, I'm I don't know what's wrong, but this is going to be worth it. I promise. Uh, well, Maria, um, go ahead. There, say, uh, okay, sorry. Just let us know when you're ready. You were saying about this um, gazebo, Maria? No, I was just going to say that once our educational gazebo, but this is more of a um, just open to the public for pictures on, on those Saturdays that were open. And tasting, <laughs> great tasting. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And a couple of months ago, this the, the plant hadn't grown in as well as it is now. And I would imagine next month, uh, these grapes should be ready if the birds and the animals don't get to them before we get to taste them. And you can see all that willow fluff on them. Hey, Maria. Yes. Do you see my screen, what I'm looking at right now? Um, yes, do you want me to spotlight you? Yeah, please spotlight it.
That's live footage. Hey, I was trying to launch. Do you guys see that? Um, not Hello? yet. Um, we're still. Nathan? Oh, I see you it now. You don't see what I'm spotlighting? Yeah, it's like a hawk. Oh. That's, pro it's blurry. that's yeah, probably the red. You look here. The red shoulder. It's probably hawk. the red shoulder. Yeah. I heard a red shoulder hawk. It's blurry because. Yeah. Wow, it's pretty majestic. Yeah, someone said it's a red shoulder hawk. Oh, it is. Yeah. It was just standing like right in front of me, but isn't it beautiful? Yeah, pretty spectacular. Yeah, it was, it was um, it was just standing right about. So, what's the difference between this hawk and a Cooper's hawk, Nathan? Um, Cooper's hawks have um, well, their their color coloration is different, but Cooper's hawk, hawks have much longer tail, have a little bit longer tails. Um, this one, if you, this one's more, it, it's more similar to a. Uh, it's actually somewhere in between like the way a Cooper's hawk behaves and, and like a red-tailed hawk. It, it kind of acts like a, a hawk that soars, but also like a woodland hawk. You'll see these in the, you'll see these generally associated with forests. And then sometimes you'll see them like flying up above Bixby marshland. Um, but I think the diet for one thing is different. The, the Cooper's hawks tend to eat, they tend to be like a, um, uh, like bird eaters, they don't. I mean, they eat more than birds, but like one of the one of the things they eat are, are small birds. Um, but this, like, if you if you see it from the side, it the sh there should be a little bit of a red shoulder patch on the on the wings on the shoulder. Um, but it's kind of hard to see from this angle. Thank you. Cool. I, I just before um, before we move on, I wanted to mention that for those of you that are joining us uh, locally, oh, you do have an option. We actually have docents, so we we have docent volunteers that help lead the tours when the marsh is open to the public again. So if you're interested, um, make sure you send us an email. I'll put our email right here uh, to let us know because this. Marsh belongs to to everybody. All right. Oh, what is that? Well, little lizard that's sunbathing right now. Very nice. Uh, Paula says, if it has a blue belly, it's a western fence lizard. I would take that as a good answer. It's sitting on a fence. We have. <laughs> I was going, well, it's very close. Yeah, listen. You can hear the song squirrels in the background. I hope it doesn't attack. Oops. Oh, bye, lizard. Oh, I'm sorry. Paula says, how long is, or actually we're asking, Tori's asking how long this tour is. And Paula is saying that the lizards sit out in the sun and do push-ups showing off flashes of that color. Oh, wow. Cool, thank um, you for and, sharing that. And that's another way of saying, how are we wrapping up soon, I think as well. Well, we can wrap up the, the tour now and we can say, oh, I'm sorry, Maximilian had a question I forgot to ask. Is our California roses only pink and do they flower all year? I, I So part of me wants to say that California roses only flower twice a year, but I, I believe they're only pink. I'll be better prepared, Maximilian, uh, when you come back next year I'll, or next next month, I'll, I'll, be, I'll have a solid answer for you. Thank you. All right. Um, so we're coming up to the hour. Basil, is there anything else we need to visit? Basil, where are you? Nathan, what's going on? I do not know. Can you hear me? 
yeah, I hear you. I'm just gonna spotlight myself. I think we lost our feed from. Hello. Yes. Basil's phone died, but he's joining uh, right now. Okay, no problem. Um, well, while Basil joins us again, I wanted to thank everybody for coming here. And I wanted to point out one thing. Why do we care about the marshlands? 95% of the marshlands in California are actually endangered. So we take a lot of great pride in protecting this little piece uh, of, of uh, marsh, our Bixby Marsh. We call it the Hidden Jewel in Carson. Um, I hope that maybe in the future people can come and, and, and visit us. And the reason I asked is, or how did you hear about our tour is so that when we reopen the marsh, we can make sure we let you guys know. So, and you guys can visit here at Bixby Marshland in, in, in person. We've had some comments. Uh, Melanie is visiting us from Malaysia. She says, very lovely. And Mr. Jordan says, great tour. So with that, are we, Basil, is he back? Can you hear me, Maria? My phone died. I know. Can you hear me? Yes, but you're sideways. I can barely hear you. I said you're sideways. Rotate the phone. Genesis, okay. There we can go. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to everybody for joining us. We were just walking back. And, I, and again, I said, mentioned, um, we'll let you guys know when the when Bixby Marshland reopens again, and we'd be very excited to have you. Do you guys want to say bye to everybody? All right. Thank you, folks. Sorry about that. My phone died in the middle of the, um, I think the lizard didn't want to be spotlighted anymore. It's okay. But thank okay. you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, everybody's saying bye. Thank you. Great representation that they will visit um, by Mimi. And uh, thank you very much. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye.